What's up guys, it's Mike from The Art of Guitar here to show you some Metallica techniques. They were a huge influence when I was growing up. Actually, my second biggest influence, Kiss was first when I was really young, I didn't play guitar yet. But then when I got into guitar, my cousin Jeff brought over a Metallica tape and Justice For All, and I listened to Black In and got hooked right away. And then the one video was out at the time and it freaked me out a little bit, but it intrigued me enough to wanna figure out how they were playing. And then ever since then, I've stuck to guitar. So I owe a lot to my cousin Jeff and also to Metallica. So I wanted to pay tribute to them. We gotta get right to it because there's a lot of techniques. So let's start right off with the main scale that Kirk Hammett plays. Hopefully all you guys know the minor pentatonic scale. If not, you could check it out on the website, theartofguitar.com. We teach all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and play through the scale one time at the 12th fret of the sixth string. <laughs> So don't let people give you a hard time if you really study pentatonic. A lot of people make you think that it's super basic, but it's what you could do with the basic stuff that usually makes a guitar player great or not. So what Kirk likes to do is take the top part of that scale, just do a pull off from the 15th to the 12th fret, reach down, hit the 15th fret of the second string, and then come back up to this 12th fret of the first string. And we start off, start off with a pull off, reach down, back up. It ends up with a four note sequence that you could play like this. You can also use your ring finger if you don't like to use your pinky. And as far as the right hand goes, I like to do my circular picking as you guys probably know. I do an upstroke for the first pull off, then down, down. Creates a circular type motion, but I don't believe Kirk does that all the time. I see his hand sort of going like this, so I believe he's alternate picking it. Now just move that down the scale. So the next couple sets of strings, we're going to have 15, 12 pull off to the 14th fret now. It's going to be a little different shape. And then we're at the 14th fret here to the 14. And of course you can go all the way down to the bottom if you want to. It gets a little weird down here. He will once in a while go across the entire scale and just briefly play with the low notes. Here's an example of just kind of messing with that concept now. So I was kind of improvising too a little bit. I think he does play something similar to that. He'll do something like... If you want to now, take some of the pull-offs and double them up every once in a while, you get more of this sound. And then if you want to, you can start to reach up and also include the 17th fret in this case. Watch how this sounds. So that's actually part of Seek and Destroy. A scale that James seems to like to use a lot in the early stuff is the blue scale. If you don't know that, it's the minor pentatonic with an added flat, flatted fifth. And that's interval talk. We're not talking about frets right now. A flatted fifth is actually, in this case, if we're in A minor, would be that note right there. So what happens with that is you you have one more note to work with. And James would do something similar to maybe That's a lower version of what I really want to do, which is up here. Sound familiar? So whether it's used as a quick little lick, like a filler lick while he's doing other riffs or power chords, he could also use it within riffs itself. So for example, in Jump in the Fire. So it's used pretty blatantly there. You see if it's G minor, blue scale right here. So that's an obvious example of using the blue scale in a riff. James likes to do inverted fifths all over the album Kill Em All. And what happens is if you just take just a normal power chord, let's say a C power chord. So that's gonna be a C here, the root note, and a fifth interval here. So C and G. Played together, you get a power chord, otherwise known as a C5. Well, if you take this C and you bring it up an octave, which is actually here now, the third 
string fifth fret and play that instead of the lower one put that with the old interval here you get a little bar shape and if you look from the side view my finger is laying flat across those two notes that's a great way to play an inverted power chord why because it frees up your hand in sort of the smoke on the water type thing And you feel more like you're playing individual notes when you're playing power chords. It's a great way to get a thicker sound with less effort. Instead of doing this claw shape and moving it around, you're just doing this whenever you want. James does it in a way that allows him to hit the open string underneath it, and he starts doing stuff like... You can also use it like this. Now, if you had to do that with power chords, it would sound like this, or it would look like this. So you can see, sometimes using the barred versions, the inverted fifths, is way more convenient, and it just sounds better sometimes. By the way, blue scale right there, it came back. Let's take the idea that we did earlier where we were doing the Kirk Hammett pull-off trick. And instead of going down to the 15th fret, which would create the box shape, I want you to try going to the 13th fret now with your middle finger. It's going to create more of a diatonic sound. So instead of this pentatonic sound, we're going to get this. This is where I really like the circling picking, circular picking. You start to hear fade to black come out of that. Now, if you were to just take this shape, and move it up a whole step or two frets, remember. Now we're gonna be pulling out the 17th fret to the 14th fret, reaching down to the 15th fret of the second string and back to the 14th fret of the first string. You actually get fade to black. You can move that up and stretch out a little bit further to get another part of that song. So I had that extra pull off just like before, and then we move way up high. All right, let's take that pentatonic idea a little bit further. We talk about unison bends quite a bit in the other videos, and that's usually when we play down here, we're like. You know, the Led Zeppelin sound. What Kirk is good at doing is taking unison bends. Of course, he just does the standard ones as well. Every guitar seems to, every guitarist seems to. But he also does staggering unison bends where you play them separately, and it gives it a really cool cutting sound. That was really cool sounding. And now if you just move that up, remember by the way that the unison bend is the, in this case, the second string 15th fret D, bending up a whole step to E. And then with your first finger, you're hitting the E on the next string. So in a way, they're both coming towards the same note, just in different ways. This one's bending to it, and this one's already there. Now, if you move it up one fret at a time, you get sort of a master of puppet sound. And you can keep climbing, you can go at different speeds if you want to. You could use your pinky or your ring finger. Just whatever is more convenient for you. You can't play Metallica without a strong right hand. And what I call machine gun playing, that's because of in the song one, you have to, you have to have a really tight, strong right hand. And typically Metallica palm mutes almost everything. So if you took the side of your hand and laid it right across where the bridge meets the strings, you'll get this tighter sound as you play chords, power chords. That's the sound of Metallica really. So start with a palm mute, you have to get that down first, and then you can start to play with it. So let's just go to the open E string, palm muted. That's just all down strokes. Try down and up strokes. Try to keep that tight with maybe a metronome. Don't forget about your metronomes, people. And then try to go faster. Now if you heard like the song Whiplash, It 
It requires you to go really fast with that idea. So start slow, make sure it's even, and bring it up to speed. And then you could do little bursts, like in one and have a little bit of control when you do that. There's a lot of different ways to do this though. I mean, if you go through all of their albums practically, there's different rhythms that you have to do this with. For example. And then there's galloping rhythms where they have to go. When it comes to riffs, one thing that some bands shy away from are chromatic movements. Chromatic just means where you ascend or descend by one half step each way. On a guitar, as you know, I hope, half step is just one fret away. So if you take a look at the song For Whom the Bell Tolls. They're not afraid to do that. So James is just doing this descending pattern with power chords. Uh, there's a band called Pantera, you probably know of, that does that as well. They just go the other way and they're in drop D, but this is kind of close to it. That's the idea of it. It's not exactly how they play it though. So that chromatic sound can actually be very brutally heavy and it's really accentuated in the song Master of Puppets. So I'm not gonna really go into the song right now. I just wanna show you how he just moves one fret over each time. Keeping on my first finger. So that sound of one half step down each time can actually be very heavy sounding. Another part of the rhythm aspect of Metallica is you have to have fast downstrokes. This sort of ties in with the last lesson, but I wanted to make it separate because I want you guys to develop your chromatic riffs if possible, maybe write your own. But when it comes to playing Metallica, if you're doing a lot of down and up strokes, you're probably doing it wrong. For example, let's take Creeping Death. I used to play it like this. It doesn't sound terrible, but it's not as strong as if he did all downstrokes. You can just feel that it grabs the beat a little bit better. The song I had the most trouble doing that with was probably Master of Puppets, uh, especially this part. Like, are you kidding me? He's actually doing that? And then not to mention the verse riff is just crazy. My wrist feels like it's busted by the end of the song. Let's take Master Puppets or Creeping Death, any of those masterpieces, and study what the right hand has to do. This is what I was sort of talking about before, where when you play with palm muting, there's times where you have to lift up and then get it right back down. Practice this by just doing an open E muted, palm muted. whatever you want to do, and then lift your hand up off the string, making it just open and go back and forth. Until you can do one of each, that's huge. Watch what you have to do in the song Creeping Death. I'll go slow. So my hand's basically looking crazy at that time, like a fish flopping on land, but it's because I'm trying to get my wrist off or my palm off the string just for that brief second to make it sound a little differently in a dynamic sense. Master of Puppets, same thing. If it was all muted, if it was all open, it's actually kind of cool, but you mix them together. All right, getting back to some lead stuff, what I want to do is pull off the open string concept, which we've done in other videos, but Kirk uses it really great in a lot of songs. One of them in particular is he'll do the G minor pentatonic and just pull off to open strings, kind of like the song Magic Man by Heart. Love that sound. Because it's in the G minor, pulling off to the B on that string just sounds a little bit strange, which makes it sound cool to me. So Kirk uses it, I believe it's Jump in the Fire but it's I realize I'm reaching back like 
two decades ago when I was first, you know, really playing these tunes. So some of these might be a little bit blurry, but that's the concept. It's just the pull off to the open string. You could do that on a couple of strings like I just did with a scale like that, or you could just play on one string and pull off ECDC Thunderstruck style as you climb. So let's go to the third string and I'm just gonna play an A minor scale up the neck, up the uh, third string, as I just do pull off. So I'm gonna double the pull off. So watch this. <laughs> If you notice, I'm just following a scale up one string, and as I do it, I'm hammering down and I'm plucking the string. Remember, you can't just lift your finger off. You have to actually pluck the note, which is why I call them pluck off sometimes. Going back up here, which is a place we're gonna be playing a lot today, we're gonna go 15th fret to 12th fret. We're gonna add tremolo picking. Now, everybody has their own way to tremolo pick. Today, I'm gonna do it my old-fashioned style because this is how I used to do it back when I did a lot of Killa Mall stuff. It's when I basically do the uh, whole arm is moving like crazy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from 15th fret to 12th fret and just do a quick little strike with my pinky. So the 12th fret is actually the main note that I'm trem picking, but my other finger, my whether it's my pinky or my ring finger, is going to be playing the other notes and striking the notes really quick like a snake, I guess. So let me start trem picking and then adding the higher notes. Okay, that's at a slower speed. If you start to go crazy with it, that sounds really great. I wanna see if I can reach to that 19th fret. Gotta do my finger splits. The finger yoga we like to teach. Whew, barely reached it. You don't just have to have static notes like that. You could do pull-offs like we did a little bit on the open string as we were climbing. Let's go to the high E string and I'm gonna tremolo pick like crazy, and then I'm just gonna do a double pull off. So it's gonna be three frets apart, so maybe seventh fret to fourth fret to open, then move up. It kind of um, blends in with the Angus Young stuff we were doing a little bit. So if I do this just with pull offs, it sounds cool. It's very clean sounding, very smooth. But if I start to add just real rough tremolo picking to it. If you listen to a lot of the Kill em All stuff, Kirk doesn't really care if he's very accurate. He's just going for that intense sound as he's climbing up. So let's try that a couple different ways. First, let's do it with the pull offs like we just did. Then what I want you to do is also try it with just fretting a few notes. So I like to take one shape, maybe one, two, four shape with first finger, second finger, fourth finger, and then just come up like that while tremolo picking. So you see I'm not being very accurate either. If I did it slow, it'd probably be a mess. But in this way, you could go back and forth and sound pretty crazy. If you listen to Seek and Destroy, there's one time where he just comes down really fast. And I was, I was like, what is he doing there? So I tried to find the tab, I tried to put it in the computer, slow it down, and it sounded basically like this. It was just ugly, but fast, it, it makes up for it because it sounds cool. Take that pentatonic scale and play it in triplets, walking in threes. So lots of three things happen in here. We have the pentatonic scale backwards. We're gonna play three notes of it. Come back a note. Play three, come back a note. You end up with triplets if you're playing over a certain beat using threes. You can go all the way down to the bottom if you want to. Let's go a little bit faster. That's a Kirk Hammett trademark right there. There's gonna come a time where you have to do finger rocking. What I mean by that is if you have it across two strings, let's say at the 12th fret, you have to be able to rock it back and forth so that a few of your licks will sound cleaner than if you left it just laying flat across two strings. Here's an example of that. Okay, that sounds a little bit too much. There's too much bleed going on between the two notes. Well, if that happens, you might have to rock your finger so that it kills the previous note it was just playing. It's a cool form of left hand muting. See the difference as I'm rocking? 
All right, so try this one time. Let's go from 15th fret to 14th fret, 15th fret to 17th fret. G, F sharp, G, A, as we do that rocking technique with it. Here's what we get. Octave slides are a great way to fill in some space. I remember when we played the uh, junior high talent show as kids, we played Ride the Lightning, which is kind of funny. We played a song about someone dying on the electric chair in front of a bunch of kids, but they liked it. What we're gonna do is we're going to go to the fourth string, second fret. And to make the octave from here, typically when we are on the lower strings, our octaves look like this. But when we get to the higher strings, we have to reach up with our pinky. So we go up one, two, three frets, and this time we're on the second string, fifth fret, and we end up with two E's like that. But the hard part is muting around it so that the string in the middle's dead, and then the outside strings are dead too. So all you want are the two notes you're pressing down on to make a sound. And we go really deep into left hand muting on the website, so check that out. So if I take this and start moving it around, you get octave slides, and in the context of Ride the Lightning, you get this. Even after all these years, I still remember some of it. Kirk's not only good at walking down scales across the strings, he's also good at walking down scales across one string, or I should say, I should say down one string. So if whether it's Fade to Black or a lot of other songs, Sanitarium, he starts walking down certain scales. It's kind of tough because you're on one string, you have to play three notes clean, and then you have to walk down and hit the right frets as you're going down. So I suggest picking a scale, sticking with those notes, and then walking all the way down to the bottom of the string, and then you can walk back up in the same way. It's a very disciplined practice. So let's say I just wanted to do all natural notes. I would go like this. But if you go a little faster over time, you start to develop this sense of shifting as you go down, which is huge as a guitar player. If you wanna get really frustrated, take a simple concept like three notes per string and try to climb up a string and keep it clean. That can be very difficult. So sort of playing on the idea of climbing a string and going down, except we're gonna do it on two strings now. What I want you to try is just take any symmetrical pattern. So for example, first finger, second finger, fourth finger, and just pick anywhere you want and just try to do that on two strings in a grouping of six like this. That could be kind of easy at first, if you're familiar with scales, but as you climb up, let's just try to keep the same shape for now. Try to, try to keep that same thing going as you ascend one fret at a time. It could be a lot more difficult than you think, and then when you start to put it into an actual diatonic scale, then you have to think a little bit, because now the patterns aren't gonna be so pretty. But we're gonna get the natural notes happening as we climb up, and you're gonna end up with these weird shapes. I recommend you practice those that direction and then the other direction where you start on the second string and then ascend to the first string. Pretty soon you feel like John Petrucci. When I first learned Fade to Black, I had a lot of trouble because I wasn't used to arpeggiating chords, which means playing a chord one note at a time. I was so used to strumming that when it came time to do something like this, I couldn't deal with it. I just couldn't get those notes to really happen like I wanted them to. So you really wanna work on being able to take a chord and play it individually one note at a time. That'll happen in Fade to Black, it'll happen in Sanitarium, not really a chord. Well, they are chords, but they're not your typical open chords as you move up. Even Master of Puppets. Especially when you have to start finger picking, of course, that's gonna be the epitome of, of arpeggios. Then you're kind of forced to play arpeggios, broken up chords, and unforgiven. Mm -hmm. 
a good way to break up the pentatonic scale, sometimes it can get a little tiring hearing it all the time, is by doing this diagonal walk-up that I like, that Kirk does in The Four Horsemen. And all I'm doing is the 12th fret, 13th fret, 14th fret on each has its own string, and then you walk up as you go. Throw that in one time when you're tired of your pentatonic runs and it really grabs people's attention. <laughs> So I like the way it's a pattern and you just slinky it up as you go. It's a cool thing to do. You can go backwards too. It sounds great as well. <laughs> sounds like a Steve I warm up now. But throw that in once in a while just to kind of throw things off a little bit. You will have to do some sweep arpeggios when it comes to Metallica, especially the early stuff. What happens is it'll be a three string arpeggio and sometimes he'll go one direction. And then another song like Leper Messiah, you have to go backwards. So let's get good at both. Let's just go to the third string, 14th fret, and we're gonna go to the 13th fret after that, then to the 12th fret, another diagonal pattern. And remember when you sweep pick, you wanna lift up your fingers as you play each string. If you leave them down, you end up with a too much crosstalk between the notes. You want them individual sounding. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach up to the 17th fret of the first string, play that and pull off, back to the 12th fret, and then come back. So real slow. We get really fast, you can really whip up that, that first part easily, because it's just like a rake. But coming down, can be a little bit tricky. So as you can see, sweep picking can get so fast that you don't even feel like you're doing anything. In Metallica's case, you wanna do it controlled because it's with the beat. Diddly 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 do. So put on a click. And really work on accenting the bottom and the top notes with the beat and you get really tight with it. In Leper Messiah, he goes the other way like I was talking about and it's a little bit of a different shape. Here's what it is. It's one of my favorite ways of getting into sweeping, just because it's a short little fun thing to do. So we're gonna go to the 17th fret of the first string, pull off to the 14th fret. Go to the 15th fret of the second string with our middle finger, and then reach down with our first finger on the 14th fret of the third string. Back to the 15th fret of the previous string, and then back home to the 14th fret of the first string. So you end up with this, pull off in the beginning, Move it around. So you can do it in multiple places. You don't have to play it exactly like Kirk Hammett does. When I first started doing sweep picking to learn, I used to do the Woody Woodpecker theme, which is strangely in this whole style. You probably notice Kirk just takes a scale and finds a bunch of ways to make it sound intense. So sometimes he's climbing up He'll just do a series of double pull-offs. See how it's a double pull-off? So we're going from the G, pulling off to the F sharp, pulling off to the E, and we're gonna do that four times. In the real song that I'm thinking of, it's actually eight times, but let's save some time here. Then we're gonna move up to the 17th fret, pull off to the 15th fret, pull off to the 14th fret. That's a little odd. Then move up to the 19th fret, 17th fret, 15th fret. And you might feel like you're running out of room, so you gotta get really used to those skinny frets when it comes to Kirk Hammond, okay? Let's put those together. Move up. Move up. And he keeps moving up till he gets to the very top. And then there's that 22nd fret bend we're gonna have to talk about in a little bit. Natural harmonics always seem to work their way into the lessons because so many people know how to utilize them in a cool way. James is no exception. In Sanitarium, So he uses them in a very artistic way. When he does it live, he does that. When I first started guitar, I was like, what is he doing? It sounds like little bells or something. And it's just the natural harmonic. Remember, to do them, you're not pushing on the string, you're touching the string just a little bit. Right above the metal bar, the fret, of the note you're aiming for, play them and let go and you get that nice chiming sound out of it. 
They work best at the 12th fret, the 7th fret, and the 5th fret. At first, when you get better, you could find them in other places, but start off with that for now. Earlier, I did a little bit of Nothing Else Matters, and he does it there too. See how that can really add just to the sound you're already getting? So if it's one thing, and then you add this, Suddenly the notes jump up an octave and it sounds cool. The two string concept is huge with Kirk Hammett and James. And when Kirk does this sliding scale, it's a lot of fun. What you're gonna do is you're gonna slide down on the second string, reach up on the first string and hit a higher note and it creates this really cool way of sliding around on, on scale. <laughs> We're getting into some Dimebag Daryl stuff. I don't have anything against power chords because I use them all the time, but sometimes you want to change it up a little bit. And instead of just doing an E power chord like James does a lot, which here it's the seventh fret of the fifth string and the ninth fret of the fourth string. Sounds great. But instead of doing a fifth interval, sometimes it's cool to do a third type of interval. So let's try this one time. Let's still hit that E here, but with our ring finger. And then let's go to the fourth string fifth fret, and that's gonna be a minor third interval. We teach intervals on the website. So if you play those together, you get a different sound. Does that sound familiar? I used to call it a backwards power chord because I didn't know what it was. Now I know it as a minor third interval from the root note right here. So instead of a fifth interval, we have a minor third. And you could try that in different places too. Let's say we go to the fifth fret of the fifth string, which is D. We could do a major third under that one and it sounds really cool too. So that would be the fourth fret of the fourth string, F sharp. Play that with the D. And you get a very Metallica-like sound. Let's do pick tapping now. So if you use the side of your pick, the long side here, face it towards the guitar and bounce it up and down video game style. I always talk about when you have to push a button really fast on a controller, you get this bouncing sound. Do that on a particular note. Sounds like that, it's very cool. If you were to push down behind it anywhere and maybe you know just do some hammer-ons and pull-offs at the same time, you get kind of an interesting sound. starting to sound like one a little bit now. So all I'm doing is I'm at the 12th fret, 15th fret, and just going like that while I tap the pick. You can go to the next string and do the same thing. Move it down. I think he does this cool. Or I think he's just using the side of his pick to almost like pick the note. Instead, he's just bouncing the pick like that. Cool little trick. You guys are gonna have to get so good at tremolo picking with accuracy that it's gonna be crazy. So what I always recommend is take some kind of scale, start tremolo picking, and try to slide into the next note in time. So maybe you want four on each note. That's timed in fours, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as you climb or, dis or descend. But you could also do threes, you could do sixes, you could do a lot of different ones. And that's where tremolo picking and just speed picking sort of blur lines. If I want to do threes, and they do that in one when they climb up, where you have to hit a certain amount of picks, but you're picking so fast, it feels like you're trem picking. One thing I hear Kirk do a lot is this. Before he goes into his licks in the regular pentatonic here, he starts below it and works his way into it. So it's nice because it feels like an on-ramp, like you're here and then you're ramping into the next one. And there's actually another on-ramp onto the higher end of it in the Albert King box like we talk about. But let's start off just playing this little square shape below it and then sliding into it after you get past the fifth fret. <laughs> So there's a lot of things you could do when you're in the process of doing that as well. 
So that's another common Kirk Hammondism right there. And just come up with patterns, and who knows? <laughs> become a normal part of your pentatonic playing. I've already shot this entire video and then I decided to redo it because I forgot a few key Kirk Hammett techniques. And the biggest one that I forgot is the 22nd fret bend that I keep talking about that I dread. I don't really dread it, it's just I have a lot of memories of being nervous, climbing up the neck and having to hit that, being afraid my string was gonna break, being afraid I wasn't gonna hit it. It's really important to get used to and to be comfortable with playing way up high on the 22nd fret. Yes, you could just get a 24 fret guitar and have an easier time or play an SG, which is sitting right over there. But on certain guitars, the 22nd fret can be pretty high up. So I recommend you practice with your ring finger and pinky bending that note. <laughs> The biggest mistake people make is they bend it flat because it's so hard to play up there, they end up with this. And it kind of hurts people's ears because it's a little bit flat, kind of like when a singer is just a little bit under the note for a while, it just doesn't sound good. So get a tuner out and hit that note and make sure it says E when you get to the top. Right? In Andrzej's For All, Kirk really goes crazy. He starts doing things that you never heard him do before, and he does this really cool double harmonic. Uh, dive bomb. This guitar can't really do it as well as my other guitar does, but my other guitar is buzzing like crazy right now, so I have to get that fixed. But if you were to take two natural harmonics and play them at the same time, in this case we're going to go to the second string, third string, fifth fret, fifth fret. Remember the natural harmonics is you don't push, you just touch. Play the two notes together and then do a dive with your bar. It could sound pretty cool. So try it out, it might be a cool way to add some flair to your solos. During the Black Album, Kirk really got into his wah pedal and he started doing a lot of bends with the wah pedal. And a big bend that he likes to do is the double bend, which we've talked about I think in four other videos. But if you go to the second string and the third string and you just lay your finger flat across, let's say the seventh fret, seventh fret, and bend it, you can see how both of them are bending just by laying my finger flat. Now it sounds like this. That's if you just do the bend. If you add wah to that. It's an extra gritty sound. It really has emotion if you add everything together. So yes, Kirk may have gotten wah happy during that time period, but I think he was just trying for a different vibe. Maybe he was tired of all the Injustice for All techniques that he maybe had to do night after night for years and years. You can also get a cool effect with that. So we're bringing back some of the past techniques to help us out now. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the Metallica techniques. It was a lot of fun to show you. Uh, what's helped me become a better guitar player. I learned a lot of Metallica early on. So uh, if you enjoyed this, be sure to check out the website, theartofguitar.com, and join that if you can, and then subscribe on the YouTube site as well. And we have a lot more videos coming, so keep an eye out, and we'll talk to you soon.